Now we're going to focus on the glucose alanine cycle. And this pathway in some respects is similar. It's similar to the Cori cycle, but it's different in one way. This pathway does not actually use lactate, although there still is the lactate dehydrogenase reaction working. It's instead going to use alanine, an amino acid. So it's going to be kind of a similar concept. Over here we had liver on the left, muscle on the right. Over here we have liver on the left, muscle on the right. And the transport fluid for each of these molecules is the blood. Let's start over in the muscle again. We know glucose is going to react with uh, all the enzymes in glycolysis. And glycolysis is going to break that glucose down into pyruvate. Now the pyruvate can certainly be converted to lactate, okay, which is what we saw in the Cori cycle. However, the pyruvate can also react with an enzyme referred to as ALT, which stands for alanine transaminase. Turns out what alanine transaminase does is it converts pyruvate into alanine. Alanine is a normal amino acid, one of them that we find in muscle, but it's not going to be used in muscle here, at least being incorporated into proteins. The alanine can then be dumped into the blood, and it travels in the blood, and then it gets taken up by the liver. This enzyme over here, which is not indicated, is also ALT, alanine transaminase, and it turns out that alanine can be converted back to pyruvate, this, the reverse reaction of what occurred in the muscle. Alanine can be converted back to pyruvate, and then through the process of gluconeogenesis, pyruvate can then be converted back to glucose, and then the glucose is dumped into the blood, and it finds the skeletal muscle, gets uptaken by the skeletal muscle, and the process repeats in a cycle. So when we looked at the Cori cycle, here's the key. Glucose got converted to pyruvate, but instead of using the pyruvate, it's the lactate that was dumped out and the liver used to make glucose. Here, in the glucose alanine cycle, the glucose gets converted to pyruvate through glycolysis, but it's not the lactate that gets used by the, scal by the liver, it's actually pyruvate first gets converted to alanine. And the alanine is what gets dumped out, taken up by the liver, converted back to pyruvate, and then back to glucose, and the cycle repeats. So if there were one main difference between the Cori cycle and the glucose alanine cycle, it's that the Cori cycle uses lactate. The glucose alanine cycle uses alanine. However, both lactate and alanine are able to be dumped into the blood from the skeletal muscle, and they get transported to the liver, where ultimately they are converted back to glucose, and then the glucose is the fuel that's used by the skeletal muscle. Okay? There is much more of a tendency for the glucose alanine cycle to be used under more aerobic conditions, and then the Cori cycle is used under much more anaerobic conditions. Okay? However, they are both used to some extent at any given time. Okay? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications.